So, all right. So before starting this video, I want to tell you about two equations of spacing in contraction and expansion joints. So spacing in contraction joint is given as 2SC into 10 raised to the power 4 divided by WF where SC is the tensile stress in concrete. W is the unit weight of concrete which is given in kilogram per meter cube normally taken as 2400 kilogram per meter cube and F is the coefficient of friction between bottom of the slab and the supporting layer. So it is given as LC is equal to 2SC into 10 raised to the power 4 divided by WF where LC is the spacing between the contraction joints and the equation of spacing in expansion joint is given as delta is equal to L alpha into T2 minus T1 where delta is the width of the expansion joint in the cement concrete slab. T2 minus T1 is the difference between the two surfaces that is the top and the bottom and alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. Alright, now let's talk about some of the previous year questions that have been asked in GATE. Alright, so this first question says that in a cement concrete pavement, double bars are used in. Alright, so I want to tell you that in some of the construction, double bars are used in contraction joint, that is dummy joints. But it's not the general obvious case. Our general obvious case is they are used in expansion joints. So in these options, longitudinal, construction, dummy and expansion, you are going to choose expansion joints. Our next question says that a contraction joint is provided in concrete pavement too. Alright, before answering this question, I want to tell you that a contraction joint is provided for preventing the slab from contraction and to prevent the spreading of fine cracks that are developed under contraction joints. So what are our options? The first one is prevent contraction of the pavement. Yes, it's true. Permit cracking at the joint? No. Lower the bending moment in the pavement in order to reduce pavement thickness? No. Lower the temperature gradient across the depth of the pavement? No. So the first is correct. Prevent contraction of the pavement. And this next question says that since the moisture content at the bottom of a rigid pavement slab is generally more than at the top. So A is the bottom of the slab is generally in tension. Yes, it can be true. The second is the top of the slab is generally in compression. No, the bottom of the slab is generally in compression. No, the bottom of the slab is neither in compression nor in tension. No, we know that the bottom of the slab is generally in tension. So A is correct. So this question says that the width of the expansion joint gap is 2.5 cm in a cement concrete pavement. The spacing between expansion joint for a maximum rise in temperature of 25 degrees Celsius is you are given the coefficient of thermal expansion as 10 into 10 raised to the power 6 per degree Celsius. So in the beginning of the video, I told you about the formula of spacing in expansion joints. We know that the spacing is measured from center to center of the expansion joint. So in order to measure it from center to center, we are going to take only half width of the expansion joint. So delta is the full width of the expansion joints whereas we are going to take only half width of the expansion joint that is 2.5 divided by 2 it will give you 1.25 now take a look at the options they are all given in meters so you have to make sure that all your units should be in meter therefore the delta will come out to be 1.25 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters now you have everything. You have rise in temperature that is T2 minus T1. You have coefficient of thermal expansion that is alpha which is equal to 10 into 10 raised to the power 6 per degree Celsius. Putting all these values into this equation you will get the value of L that is spacing of expansion joint and it will come out to be 50 meters. That is option B is correct. Alright, so this question says that the radius of relative stiffness for a 20 centimeter thick slab with E equals to 3 into 10 raised to the power 5 kilogram per centimeter square and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.15 resting on a subgrade having modulus of 5 kilogram per centimeter square is if you remember from my previous video I already told you about the formula of radius of relative stiffness that is L equals to E H cube divided by 12 K into 1 minus nu square raised to the power 1 by 4 
or 0 0.25 now you have given everything you have slab thickness 20 centimeter you have modulus of elasticity 3 into 10 raised to the power 5 kilogram per centimeter square you have poisons ratio 0 0.15 you have modulus of subgrade 5 kilogram per centimeter cube before starting this question just make sure that all these units are according to your options so putting all these values in this equation the value of L will come out to be 79.99 centimeter which is nearly equal to 80 centimeters and which is our second option B this next question says that double bars in concrete pavement are placed in first one along the direction of traffic B perpendicular to the direction of traffic along 45 degree to the direction of traffic can be placed along any direction if you recall the layout of our CC pavement then we always place double bars in expansion joints while the expansion joints are in the direction transferred to the traffic movement the double bars are placed along the direction of traffic movement that is perpendicular to the expansion joints alright this next question says that in a concrete pavement first the temperature stress is, is tensile at the bottom during the daytime it is correct second load stress is compressive at bottom we know that load stress is not compressive at bottom during the day and the night time so this is incorrect whereas the first one is correct that the temperature stress is tensile at bottom during the daytime so statement one is correct and second is wrong that is option B okay this next question says that temperature stresses in concrete pavements may cause the slab to crack if a slab cools uniformly then the crack will develop at the which of the following locations of the slab at center near edges at corners near edges and at corners we know that the edges and corners of the slab are more in contact with air as compared to the center so when a slab cools uniformly then the cracks are likely to develop at more at the center as compared to the other two directions also the corner and edges are free to contract while cooling so when a slab cools uniformly then cracks are likely to develop at centers as compared to edges and corners so a is the correct option all right this question this question says that for a 25 centimeter thick centimeter concrete pavement uh, analysis of stresses gives the following values v load stresses due to corner loading is this wheel load stresses due to edge loading is this warping stress at corner region warping stress warping stress warping stress frictional stress frictional stress the most critical stress value for the pavement is first of all you have to recall all those four cases that is during summer at edges during winter at edges during summer at corner regions during winter at corner regions so during summer the stresses at edges is given as se plus ste minus sf so that is 32 plus 8 minus 5 which will give 35 kilogram per centimeter square now during winter stresses at edges that is se plus ste plus sf that is 32 plus 6 plus 4 which will give you 42 kilogram per centimeter square and during summer stresses at corner regions is equal to sc plus stc that is 30 plus 9 will give you 39 kilogram per centimeter square and during winters sc plus stc will give you 30 plus 7 that is 37 so the highest or maximum stress value is um, 42 kilogram per centimeter square which is the most critical combination all right okay this question says that in case of governing equations for calculating wheel load stresses using Westergaard's approach the following statements are made that is load stresses are inversely proportional to wheel load and second is modulus of subgrid reaction is useful for load stress calculation okay I guess second is true because modulus of, modulus of subgrid reaction is very useful for load stress calculations but le let's look at the first statement it says load stresses are inversely proportional to wheel load we know that stress is equal to load upon area which makes stress directly proportional to the wheel load 
So according to this equation, our first statement is wrong. That is, load stresses are inversely proportional to wheel load. So our first statement is false, but second is true. So the D option is correct. Okay, so this next question. This question says that the width of the expansion joint is 20 mm in a cement concrete pavement. The laying temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the maximum slab temperature is in summer is 60 degrees Celsius. The coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete is 10 into 10 raised to the power per degree Celsius and the joint filler compresses up to 50% of the thickness. The spacing between expansion joint should be this question is exact same as our previous question of spacing. You just have to put the values and calculate the result. And you have to give me this answer in the comments below. If you are truly learning from our videos, then I would urge you to please solve these questions. This next question says that, Select the strength parameters of concrete used in design of plain jointed cement pavement from the following choices. From the following choices. The strength parameter. Okay, the first one is tensile strength, then compressive strength, then flexural strength, then shear strength. We know that it's flexural strength in case of cement concrete pavements. Okay, uh, this question. This question says that which of the following stress combinations are appropriate in identifying the critical conditions for the design of concrete pavements? Again, this question goes to you guys. Just give me this answer in the comments below. Okay, next question. Um, consider the following statements in the context of cement concrete pavements. The first one is warping stresses in cement concrete pavements are caused by the seasonal variation in temperature. Let me correct this statement that warping stresses in cement concrete pavements are caused by the daily variation in temperature. Second, tie bars are generally provided across transverse joint of cement concrete pavements. but Tie bars are provided in the longitudinal joints. So, I guess the second statement is also wrong. That is, option D. First false and second false. Okay, this last question. This question says that the following statements are related to temperature stresses developed in concrete pavement slabs with free edges. Okay, so let's take a look at the statements. The first one says that the temperature stresses will be zero during both day and night times if the pavement slab is considered weightless. We know that stresses are caused due to self-weight of the pavement. So this statement looks true that the temperature stresses will be zero during both day and night times if the pavement slab is considered weightless. Second statement says that the temperature stresses will be compressive at the bottom of the slab during night time if the self-weight of the pavement slab is considered, which is true. So this statement is also correct. Now the third statement. The temperature stresses will be compressive at the bottom of the slab during the daytime if the self-weight of the pavement slab is considered. Now recall our previous lecture. We always say that the temperature stresses will be tensile at the bottom of the slab during daytime if the self weight of the pavement slab is considered. So P and Q are only correct statements that is option C. Okay, in the next lecture we will solve some of the questions of CBR and plate load test. Thank you.